The following programme is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, the four corners of this room, the five stars now! Let's go! Well, good evening, everyone, from the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham. It was a year ago, Championship Boxing returned to the city after a decade-long hiatus. Fight fans have waited so patiently since the glory days of Carl Froch for a world champion to throw their support behind, and it's come in the form of Lee Wood, a man viewed just a couple of years ago as a solid domestic fighter, but he's turned his career on its head with one of the performances of the year in 2021 against Zhu Kan, the then-champion from Fuzhou, and he backed it up in this very arena, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat with a 12th round knockout of the brilliant Michael Conn in last year's fight of the year. Uh, welcome to Before the Bell. Chris Lloyd here with Darren Barker as always, and I'm very pleased to say uh, Terry Harper making her commentary debut with us, but we're not going to make you do too much talking. Um, you were here on the undercard of Mick Conn uh, and Leeward last year. Heroics from Leeward to get off the canvas and do what he did, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it like, goes to show, um, obviously, in front of the home crowd and how much uh, that can affect you and, and really push you on, so. Yeah, he could need those uh, fans tonight. And, and Nottingham uh, playing Man City at the moment, Darren, if they get any sort of result from that, oh. it's going to be very loud in here, isn't can it? you imagine? I think they're 1-0 down, though. But, yeah, look, we hear it all the time, talking about football, it being the 12th man, the supporters, and Lee with, I mean, last time out against... I mean, that was special. Wasn't it was it, yeah. it was magical. It was my highlight of 2022, and, yeah, he's going to need them tonight. Yeah, it certainly is. Lots to look forward to uh, between now and then. We've got four fights for you on before the bell, so we can have a look at uh, what's coming up in the next couple of hours or so, between now and 7 o'clock. Sam Maxwell makes his return to action after his first career defeat. He's in against the 13 and 4 Sean Cooper from the West Midlands. Kieran Conway back in action, looking to be no more Mr. Nice Guy against George Silver after that defeat to Amo Williams on the Canelo Golovkin 3 undercard in September. Janae Bostan, super talented, super welterweight from Grant Smith's Steel City Gym in action for a fifth time, looking to make it five straight KOs against Peter Kramer. And then Aaron Bowen, brilliant amateur light heavyweight making his debut at 164 pounds against the 5-4 Frenchman Mathieu Gomez so all that to look forward to in the next couple of hours or so we'll be previewing a few of the fights on the main card as well Gamal Yafai in action against Diego Alberto Ruiz Chevon Clark in what could be a really good ding dong against Israel Dufus from Panama, Gary Cully and Wilfredo Flores, the New Yorker, looking to prove that they can both be top contenders in the 135-pound division. Dalton Smith defending his British 140-pound title for the second time, looking to win it outright at some point in the first quarter of this year, and it could be against the man who's in the ring at the moment, Sam Maxwell, the former... Uh, uh, champion himself commonwealth champion still of course and will be maybe looking to unify with Dalton Smith but Maxwell in a return contest here uh, and looking to show that he has still got plenty to offer at the age of 34 the man opposite him is Sean Cooper from the West Midlands these two ready to rumble so let's hand you over without further ado to our MC for this afternoon Mr David Diamante Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Motor Point Arena here in Nottingham, England. We are live on the zone for a big night of World Championship Professional Boxing. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Mr. Matt Harris. Introducing your third man in the ring at the sound of the bell for our first contest from Harrow, A-star referee, Mr. Kieran McCann. 
now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the super lightweight division. Introducing first, he wears the gray with the blue trim. He scaled 10 stone, three pounds. His professional record, 13 victories against four defeats. Fighting out of Willen Hall in the West Midlands, please welcome Sean Cooper. Cooper. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the light blue with black. He scaled 10 stone, four pounds. His professional record, 16 victories against only one defeat. He has 11 big wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Liverpool, here is the former British, WBO European, and the reigning Commonwealth Super Lightweight Champion, Super Sam Maxwell. Maxwell. Right, lads, listen up. Both know the rules, obey my commands at all times. When I tell you to break, break clearly, take a step back, throw no punches. Keep your heads out of the way, most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. So we're underway in Nottingham then. Sam Maxwell, a late addition to the card, top left of your screen. He's kept a low profile this week amidst the rumours swirling that he and Dalton Smith could be on a collision course for the British and Commonwealth titles at £140 in April. He's coming off that devastating first career defeat to the Mexican Alejandro Menendez in his hometown headliner at the Echo last April. So an opportunity to blow away the cobwebs against Sean Cooper in the silver and blue trunks. He's proved a solid domestic fighter the last six years. He's hung with some good opponents Fallen short at guys uh, around the English title level, the likes of Sam Noakes, Mark Chamberlain, Ryan Charlton, who stopped him last year. But he showed in that contest he's a very competent operator, moves well, counter punch well with both hands, landed plenty on the outside. And well, he's already getting stuck in here with Sam Maxwell. He is. I thought he'd give up a bit more ground than this early on, but he's not. He's opting to sort of stand in the pocket in the centre of the ring. He does have a lovely jab, Sean Cooper, and against Menensis. Maxwell was caught an awful lot with a jab, so that is certainly the shot for Cooper in this contest, but you can see the power where that lies with Maxwell. Maxwell now just starting to get a, a hold of centre ring behind that stiff jab. Cooper just trying to step around him, create angles, find his way past, lands one himself. And Terry, you know the heartbreak of, of that first career defeat at a high level. It's not an easy one to come back from. Sam would have been through a, a lot of self-reflection, presumably, the last six to eight months. Yeah, definitely. Um, th those fights, I feel like, that's what you learn the most from. And um, this is where I real show now. I always pick yourself up and uh, moving on for, on for more better things. Yeah, certainly will. He's uh, well-seasoned, well-travelled. And knows that he's still got a little bit to offer. Could we have some news regarding a potential Commonwealth and British unification with Sheffield Dalton Smith, who is chief support a little bit later on, defending his title against Billy Allington. As Cooper just chops a nice couple of shots to the body. He's refusing to be pushed back yeah, here. He won't. He won't take a step back. I am surprised here, but sometimes look, you're talking about Maxwell potentially fight Dalton Smith next. These are where. You hear that phrase, banana skin, comes from potential banana skin because this is the opportunity that Sean Cooper's been waiting for. His chance to potentially fight for the British title and he's going to leave everything in there. And you can see from this approach, holding the centre ring where he usually likes to move, get behind the jab, he's not having that whatsoever. Yeah. Against the bigger punch in Maxwell. Well, you're right, against Ryland Charlton in his last contest, he sat on the outside of the ring and picked some really nice straight singles. And he landed plenty, he hasn't got any stoppages on his record and unfortunately the, the pressure of Charlton eventually got to him and uh, traditionally when he has been hurt he's been hurt to the body brought his feet in nicely there Maxwell as he threw that right hand screw shot right hand has glided into range he also does it very well gliding out of range probably his key to defense a good positive start for both of them So end of round number one, Sam Maxwell, Paul Edwards at the Solly in his corner. He's worked with the likes of Danny Vaughan, Steve Maylett, uh, 
and uh, Edwards himself retired very young, was 24 or 25, became British champion of flyweight, just eight fights back in 2010, but took his first career loss, as did Maxwell, on an important night for him at the Olympia. So he understands the disappointment that Maxwell has, has been through. It was an event that led to him falling out of love with the sport and hanging him up shortly after. He's become a very good coach and he'd be the man to guide Maxwell back into domestic contention and beyond. At 34, Maxwell will feel like it's now or never for those kind of opportunities. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and a huge opportunity that is potentially next. So it's very, very important that he gets the job done this evening. But again, I will say it before. once more, this is Sean Cooper's opportunity to rip up the script and make his case for that shot. He's taking a little step back now, Cooper. Good shot from Maxwell. Three punch combination, just gliding out of range and throwing that right hand, left hook, right hand. He's favoured that combination so far. More than a capable fighter, Sean Cooper. Had a good win over Boyd Jones. And it's taken some solid operators, some time to to break him up. Took Sam Noakes, like the best part of, of nine rounds to, to put him away. So when he does go down, he tends to get back up again. Yeah, he's very tough. Talking of Sam Noakes, I was talking to Al Smith, Sam Noakes' trainer, and he said he's the hardest puncher, pound for pound puncher, he's ever trained Noakes. So he shows you how tough Cooper is. He's got to bring those feet in, Maxwell. He's falling short with a jab and that right hand there. Good head movement by Cooper. He's avoiding those shots. He's come back with his counters. Getting into a bit of a rhythm in the second round, Maxwell. Good right hand. Followed it up with the left hook. Maxwell just starting to establish a little bit at range here, which he wasn't quite able to in that first round. Cooper just stepping off him, not able to put as much pressure on him as he was in the, the first three minutes. And Maxwell's been plenty busy here as well. Yeah, he's changing up the power of the shots, isn't he? He's not loading up with much, just poking the shots out. He's busy. It's a good tempo to his fight. But Good defence by Cooper, he's moving side to side, he's not taking anything of note yeah, just yet. Oh, that's, that's a lovely... There, but that was a stiff right hand upstairs from Maxwell. Yeah. Good one too, beautiful shot. <laughs> he's got the kind of power, Maxwell, that can get him out of trouble, as we saw against Sabri Sidiri. That was his uh, Jordan Gil Grim Grafie moment in 2019. He was down a couple of times early in that contest. The left hook in the first round, uh, right hand in the second, and he had to really graft his way back into the contest. And same against Menendez, he's a, he's a real warrior, Maxwell, really digs in even when he's hurt. Good powers of recovery, and when you've got the kind of power he has, you're always dangerous in a contest. But Cooper's taking the shots well so far, lovely left hook under the elbow. And that has been a punch that has undone Cooper on a couple of times in... His career just looks for that little screw shot. So just a handful of people in here so far, it will be considerably busier a little bit later on. Lee Wood ring walks against Maurizio Lara. But right now, Sam Maxwell just starting to gain a little bit of control of this. Ball. Yeah, that was a good round. Good second round for Sam Maxwell. He got into a nice rhythm, varying up the power and the pace of the shot. He was busy, good variation. The right hand screw, left shot, followed by the right hand again. has been a nice combination for him. Don't you think, Terry? Yeah, lovely. It looked like he was really settled into that last round. And and psychologically, Terry, just to shake the, the cobwebs off after that defeat will, will do wonders for him, won't it, as well? Yeah, you have, you have plenty of questions you need to answer yourself and demons you need to put to bed, so 
uh, so far is doing great. Starting to sit down on those shots, just looking for that left hook under the elbow off the right hand. Trying to wait for Cooper to commit before countering. Nice body shot from Cooper there. It is a bit more lateral movement coming from Maxwell as well, and the feet have been good against Manessis. It just was there to be hit with the jab every single time. So they've obviously worked on his defence, and you can see in there. I've been guilty of falling short of the shots a couple of times, but there was that free punch combination again, the right hand, screw shot, right hand. He throws it really, really well. He's a little taller than Cooper, so that's why that uppercut's found the target. Always a shot, lovely one two again by Maxwell. Got to try Cooper, that's a nice jab. He avoided the shot from Maxwell, fired back with a shot. He's got to try and establish and get a foothold into this contest. He's looking comfortable, Maxwell. Yeah, it's a good wins in the, the amateurs. Followed him for, for many years, beat the likes of Tyro McKenna, beat Joe Cordina, Josh Kelly, Albert Selimov, who's a world and European champion and the only man to beat uh, Lomachenko in the amateurs and one of the first the most memorable things I can remember seeing Sam Maxwell was at York Hall when he faced Lomachenko himself back in 2013 and he equipped himself really really well had to box him twice both times over five rounds what a thankless task that was for the London 2012 Olympic champion so he's had plenty of seasoning in the amateurs and professionals just been caught by a couple of left hooks the last minute or so just letting that right hand drift a, a touch and Cooper's picking it well and a nice right hand there from the man from the West Midlands. Yeah, he's trying to get closer. He's moving his head. He's closing that gap a little bit. I think at arm's length at range. It's very comfortable for Maxwell, so it's important for Cooper. Though he's moving his head well, he's got to let his hands go. Bring that front foot in, target the body. Where I said Maxwell is slightly taller, so that target is there at the body. Maxwell looking for that three punch combination again. Avoiding it this time, Cooper. Bother though, Cooper, does he? I know he's uh, I don't feel he's winning these rounds, but he's still in there. I don't think he's been hurt with anything, he's just got to be a bit busier. Good double jab there, one to the chest, one to the, the body there. Better work, he's just got to follow that up, Chris. Yeah, and again, Cooper just stepping in nicely and landing clean shots, as I mentioned hasn't historically been a puncher and Maxwell clearly is a little ignorant of, of what is coming back and happy to just impose his own game plan at the risk of taking shots just walks Cooper onto a stiff right hand there but Cooper just bustles forwards just chops away shortens those shots up he's taking plenty Cooper but he's giving Sam Maxwell a little bit to think about in return here and he's in control Yeah, there was a nice slip out of range from Maxwell at the end there. But helped him find the, the target with that right hand. It was a lovely shot. I think we're going to see it here. Nice jab. Little slip back. That was the right hand from Cooper. Had some success in that round. See, so bringing the feet in there. Was, was guilty of falling short in the first couple of rounds, but needs to be busier, Chris. But is it a concern for you that Sam Maxwell is still getting hit with a, with a shot like that? We saw it against Menezes and there are bigger fights for him this year. That kind of shot is a shot that could get him in trouble against a bigger yeah, puncher. Yeah, I, I think it's hard <laughs> teaching old dogs new tricks and he's very upright, Sam Maxwell, and I think that's why he does get caught Second round from time to time. Starting to, to target the body with that right hand, you wonder what else he's he's setting up with that. Cooper just firing back, you know, uh, chopping right hand upstairs. Anything you'd do differently, Terry, if you was in there, Freeva man? Uh, no, just Maxwell. I feel like the one two really works well for him, and it's just maybe he could throw something after that once he's landed. Um, yeah, just staying busy with his jab. You see him looking for that right hand again, Chris. Just taking that step back, looking to chop down with a shot, Maxwell. Good right to the body, good work. 
Okay, there's a little flat from Cooper. Having plenty of, of success in terms of punches landed, Cooper, but up close you can you can really feel the difference in the weight of, of the punches and the cumulative effect that that's gonna have on either fighters. Maxwell very comfortable. To say though, Cooper, he's being hit the harder of the two, but he's he's been very steadfast. Hasn't looked bothered at any stage in the contest so far. So right hand, left hook, the quarter, a left upstairs. In return, good action when they're both stood in front of each other in the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> Turn the face, turn from Maxwell, spinning Cooper onto the ropes. Go boxing! Time. Maxwell, under there. Cooper, over there. Maxwell, it's yours. Be quick, lads. No, no chalk with you. Let's get straight in. Doing that, Jeff. Thank you. Let's go, sir. Time. Over there, lads. Come Bringing those feet in, Cooper falling short in the shot. That was a good right hand over the top. Maxwell just carrying that lead hand low. That presented the opening for Cooper. I had to say, I think this is actually what Maxwell needed in a, a return contest. Somebody that was going to keep him switched on and just present enough of a threat to not let him take his eye off the ball because he'd be dragged into probably a slightly more back and forth tear up than he would have wanted but at the same time very little point bringing him back down too many levels after where he's been operating the last couple of years and Cooper really giving it a go here step down to the body right hand through the middle lovely on the belt great finish from him Oh, that's well. lovely. He smiles because he knows he's in control, but he also knows he's in a bit of a scrap here <laughs> yeah, as well. Does. I don't think he was expecting this, Chris. I think he would have looked at the Ryland chart fight and think he's going to move an awful lot. I'll have to count of the jab that will obviously come out by Cooper, but Cooper's kind of, in some respects, neglected his footwork and he's neglected the jab. But that was a lovely right hand at the end. Good action, as we said, in the pocket there, both throwing body shots and looking to screw him up through the middle, looking for the hooks. Neither man wanted to take a step back, and this is one of the rare occasions that we've seen Cooper on the front foot landing that short jab following it over the top with the right hand but I mean the eye catch shot for me was the right hand right at the end by Maxwell credit to Cooper very very tough trying to leave everything in the ring this evening So two rounds to go here. Sam Maxwell, you think, in full control on the cards. And certainly looks, for the most part, in control of the contest. But Cooper is really playing his part in this. Maxwell just trying to create a little bit of space off that jab to throw that right hand long again. Cooper hunting him as he has been for large portions. And again, that little sneaky up jab as he just steps into range was halfway between a jab and like a little corkscrew short uppercut to the head he's shown complete disregard for Maxwell's power we know he can punch just steps back there lands a nice stiff full counter right hand but Cooper just leans on him chips away at the inside yeah, but he just didn't want to waste his opportunity, did he? You know, he's uh, he's fought differently than what I'm sure Sam Maxwell was expecting. Yeah, probably what they prepared for, yeah. Exactly, and it's credit to, you know, Sean Cooper, desperate to, to seize this moment. But he's been comfortable at times, Maxwell, though he's had to think and he's had to, to move and sort of nullify some of the work of Cooper. He's got into a nice rhythm. He's not had it his own way. Oh, 
Let's start looking now, you know, we're in the fifth round of six. It looks like he's winning this, as you say, on the scorecards, but just looking at little things that he'll have to improve on if he does get this win and does get in the fight with, with Dalton Smith. We've seen at times Sam Maxwell does bring the jab back to his chest. He cannot afford to do that against Dalton Smith, who will fire back with that right hand over well, the top. And it will be a different sort of right hand to, to yeah. the one he's been hit with tonight. Covers that ground so quickly. And I think so importantly, he's got to get that chin down. I have seen improvements since the Manessas fight, but he's still quite upright. And like I say, with the way that Dalton Smith arcs that right hand, have to tidy up on that defence, but as far as rhythm's concerned, shot selection like that left to the body and good variation. Oh, good shots at there. He's boxed well. Yeah, he has boxed well. Nice uh, right hand around the temple. Just, uh, just a momentary look of uh, Daysman on the face of Sean Cooper. He's tucked up tight. Eyes trained on Maxwell, big right hand there, centre straight down the pipe. Cooper, he saw it, but he took it flush. Hurtful straight right to the body, looking very spiteful now. Maxwell really, really got into his groove. Yeah, just, a, just a sense in those last 30 seconds there, he, he just started to beat the fight out of Sean Cooper with a, a round to go. Yeah, Cooper went on the back foot, Maxwell really on the hunt, um, looking, to, looking to hurt him and probably get him out. Yeah, sat down to, on some big singles. The last part of, of that round, and Cooper has really played his part to this point, just starting to look a little bit faded here. Still landing a few, but Maxwell, I think he, he knows too, the momentum shift has, has changed and he's probably had the best of Cooper now. Yeah, there's been some good moments for Cooper. Some good shots inside, we see him slip inside and throw that left uppercut, it was a nice shot but there's just not been enough and I think that difference in quality has shown from Maxwell who when he's gone through the gears has, has looked a, a, a better fighter and looks a good fighter. I think it'll be over the moon that he's got these rounds in the bank potentially going into that big fight Second against Dawson Smith. Well, it's been a really good five rounds so far for Sam Maxwell and his uh, ring return. I think he's appreciated the work he's had from Sean Cooper, who's been game as you like, just second best in the majority of the exchanges, but he's landed plenty and had his share of the exchanges. Lovely left hook to the body, and now Sam Maxwell in control, starting to pick some heavy singles from range to the head and to the body. There it is. And three just good judging shot. that to be on the belt, and now Maxwell starting to, to go through the gears and he's got plenty of time on the clock. His, his Cooper's starting to fade here. Legs have slowed considerably, Darren. And for the first time in the contest, he's taking a backward step. That, that's it, Chris. Exactly what you said there. He's just been second best. It's not a case of him not trying, not you know being in there just for a payday. He's tried to win this contest, but he just has been second best. And these last couple of rounds have, have been very good for Maxwell. Really starting to plant his feet and let the shots go throwing the left hook, I'm looking at where his right hand is, he's keeping the right hand up and nullifying the threat of Cooper's left hand, he's moving his feet in and out of range and it's taken him a few rounds to find his distance Maxwell, he's been busy but like I say, these last couple of rounds he's looked very, very good. Nice counter jab there, just doubled it up Cooper, just slipping outside the, the jab of Maxwell, just seeing them come in and taking the, the sting off the ones from the rear hand on the gloves. Good right hand again, it was a one-two from Maxwell, he took it well, Sean Cooper. Again, I think, you know, by the end of that fifth round, he's never really been hurt or looked that in trouble, Cooper. Been very game, very brave. But to cover what you said, Chris, he's just been second best in there. I have to say, Maxwell looks like he's enjoying himself in a way. I haven't seen him in a ring for a while. And he's been in some really tough fights in the last two or three years. I mentioned the Sidiri fight, a very, very tricky encounter against Hakeem Menace Brown, who's a, a nightmare style for, for just about anyone up to, to European level. And of course, the Menendez fight was just a horrible, gruelling tear up that he willed himself through for the most part. But he's in control here and he, and he hasn't probably felt that for quite a while. It must be a good feeling to be able to exercise your skills, being a a good tear up but know that you're in, in control and you're the boss. Yeah, you're, you're right, you said it a few rounds ago, you know, he'll be glad that he's got this work from Cooper. 
just as Maxwell goes through the gears there. He's been made to think, he's had to move his head, he's not completely at it his own way, but so far, you know, he's got six good rounds in the bank. They were holding him in good stead. When he's got into his groove, when he's got into his rhythm, he's looked a good fighter. Gumshill comes out again. Brave game effort by Cooper, but again, I'll say it, he's just been second best for us. Well, six rounds in the bank. Credit to, to that man, Sean Cooper. He really played his part in the contest. Just heads over to greet Paul Edwards, and they're all smiles in that corner. And well, I think Maxwell probably a little bit surprised. There's two, the resistance that he put up there, but that's exactly the kind of test that he needed to shake off some rust with a view to bigger fights. In 2023, first contest of before the bell down, we'll be shortly heading to the scorecards. We've got Kieran Conway and George Silva from Portugal coming up, and the uber talented Janae Bostan against Peter Kramer before Aaron Bowen makes his debut against Matthew Gomez. David Diamante has the results. Let's head to him, ladies and gentlemen. After six rounds here in Nottingham, we go to referee Kieran McCann's scorecard. It reads 60 to 54 for your winner from Liverpool Super, Sam Maxwell. Well, that was a really entertaining contest between both guys there. Credit to them. And Sam Maxwell moves on his first win for the best part of a year. And he'll be sitting around, no doubt, to watch the main event a little bit later. Thanks for the applause and a short respect for Sean Cooper. We've heard that Nottingham Forest have equalised against Manchester City with just about four minutes or so to go. It could be very, very loud. In here. Very loud, very loud. And unfortunately, I'm sat next to you because you're an Arsenal fan, so I'll never hear the end of it. But yeah, I mean, that's just going to wade and give a little bit more spice and energy in this arena. Not that we're going to need it, but incredible stuff. And again, Sam Maxwell doing the job, getting the, the job done. He's done his part now. And uh, yeah, huge credit to Sean Cooper. Great stuff. Zerto is hungry and ready to remind the world what he's made of. He's looked like a world beater in the light heavyweight division. He wants to continue that hype. He's a tough guy. Full of heart. Wow. Zerto Ramirez versus Gabriel Rosado. I can't wait to see this one. Welcome back, everybody. We are ready to rock and roll for fight number two here on Before the Bell. Kieran Conway and George Silva. For the official introductions, let's head ringside to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen from Nottingham, England, we are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing, at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring scoring A-star referee from Newark, Mr. Kevin Parker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner wearing the solid black trunks. He scaled 11 stone, 13 pounds. His professional record, 21 victories, seven defeats. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Marazino, Portugal. Please welcome the gentleman, George Silva. Silva. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the purple with black and gold trim. He scaled the super middleweight limit of 12 stone. Bang on. 
his professional record. 18 victories, three defeats, one draw, with four wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Northampton, please welcome the former WBA Intercontinental Super Welterweight Champion, Kieran Tuklas Conway. Conway. Folks know the rules, I expect a clean fight, obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times, touch gloves. So an eight rounder agreed at 168 pounds and a new mentality promised from Kieran Conway this week. The message is no more Mr. Nice Guy. He fell short in that big opportunity against Amo Williams in Las Vegas on the Canelo Triple G3 undercard in September. The first round. And they were nip and tuck through six rounds, taking three apiece. And there wasn't a great deal in it, and Williams said, comfortably, the best that I've been in with so far. But in the last three or four, Conway just allowed Williams to take hold of the contest. Not the first time it's happened to him, too. Similar story with Suleiman Sissoko, though there were circumstances outside of that, with travel being awful. But he knows, Darren, he's good enough to operate at a pretty high level. Get a very good win over JJ Metcalf. We you know he burst on the domestic scene a few years ago, earning a draw with Ted Cheeseman on three weeks' notice. It's just that bit of nastiness and spite that he's missing. And already we can see he's, he's throwing with far more intent here. It's, it's absolutely that, Chris. You know, I, I commentated on the, the Austin Williams fight and I was just left a little frustrated. And we spoke to him at the media workout and he said exactly the same thing. You know, he felt he could have done more. But yeah, I mean, you look at that and you know, there's, there's positives to take away. It's not like he boxed out of his skin against Williams and he and he lost. He could have done more. Um, he's a very good fighter. He's, a, he's tidy, compact. He's got a lovely jab, good variation. I definitely feel he punches harder than his record suggests. It's just now, like you say there, and like he says, got to be a change of approach, a change of attitude. Just that bit of nastiness. He's a nice guy. And sometimes it's, it, you know, that, that attitude, that personality can transfer into the ring. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I think it's just a case of him biting down on that gum shield and letting his hands go because he's, he's a very good fighter. I guess in the, the opposing corner, George Silva, you know, how much is left at 39? He's a good fighter. He's, uh, he's dangerous with that right hand. Yeah, we were talking about the Leon Bauer yeah. fight, weren't we? George Silva dropped him with a, a right hand. And some of, some of these German fighters between middle and, and light heavy can be a little bit overprotected. And I think there were shades at Leon Bauer. Struggled with him early, but got a, got a handle on him towards the middle of the fight. You'd expect Conway to deal with him more comfortably. He's a lot bigger than Bauer, a lot stronger, and already has, has had far higher level challenges than the German. But hey, you don't just see Silver looking to pull the uh, the trigger on that right-hand counter off the ropes, and that's probably his money punch and his best chance of getting something out of this contest. But that's a stiff jab from Conway. He's shaped up well so far. Yeah, he's got a good jab, Conway. Good variation with it, really stabs it into the body, he tries to follow it back upstairs with that right hand but you see there George Silva that's going to be his plan when he takes that space away from Conway Conway just by moving out of range making or trying to make Conway fall over the front foot so he can land that right hand but this is good work from Conway as he's back Silva onto the ropes Portuguese man done well covering up yeah, safety first at the moment Silva I say that just steps in with a, a nice one too First two meaningful shots he's landed in the contest for Conway. Responds well. End of round one in the books. And well, another man has come off the feet. He's trying to, to get his confidence back. He's in his corner there with his dad, James Conway, Alex Lecovel. Works for England Boxing. They're a very close knit team, a really good team. And Alex Lecovel said to me, the best looking team in boxing. Well, me and you aren't a part of it, so... Right. Like, uh, <laughs> or, what, or what me and you are? <laughs> Not tonight. Well, we are now Terry Arthur sat next to us. Yeah, I think we are. I think it's brought the average up, certainly. There you go. Look at the A rose next to two thorns. Yeah, yeah. yeah good positive start Ten from Conway there. The, uh, he got going and got into a rhythm quickly. Let's see if he can follow Seven, it out in his second round. Two. Two. 
And worth mentioning too, only a couple of stops, Silver Rashad, Chiquito, who can bang a bit, Lalenga Mock, that was all the way back in 2016 though. I think he's a little bit past it compared to what he was then. But he's clearly decided to have a run at things. He kind of went into journeyman circuit fighter mode before the pandemic. But since he's come out, he's been in with a, a few guys, stopped five opponents in a row, none with winning records though. There's a variation with the jab. Trying to soften up Silva to the body. Some people at home might not understand how horrible those jabs, those stiff jabs to the body are. And Conway usually tries to get the reaction, drop the hands after a few jabs to the body, and they'll look for that right hand over the top. I'll tell you what though, Terry, it can't be easy for, for Conway either. He wants to come out and make a point here, but he's, he's boxed on two Canelo undercards in the last 18 months against fringe world, fringe world level contenders, and he's having to, to come back and rebuild in front of a very, very sparse crowd early on in the afternoon. That, that's not easy, is it? No, so like, some people thrive off, um, off the pressure of, the, of a big fight and, and having the crowd really there behind them, but I feel like this is a great fight for him to come back on and, and like you said, just rebuild and get back to basics and work on things that is is worked on in the gym. <laughs> nice combination there on the ropes, just not the head back of uh, Silver for a moment. In April, both the, the British and European middleweight titles are, are active. Denzel Bentley defending the British against Kieran Smith. Mateo Signani defends the European against Felix Cash. Hamza Shiraz, of course, has the, uh, the Commonwealth title. Being honest, you don't necessarily know that Conway would be the favourite against any of those outside of Signani. Lovely right hand there and just starting to put the shots together. With Silva backed into the corner. Is he hurt here? Conway just pushes him off, get, gathers himself, gets a little bit of space. He's trying to look for that right hand off the jab again. Good work changing the levels with the shot. It was the, the right hand twice that hurt the Portuguese man. This is good work. So that every time he tries to offer something back, Silva, he's just far too slow and it's made it very easy for Conway to, to fire back with counters. Just got to keep the foot on the gas, Conway. It's that right hand that's doing the damage. You've got to make sure he brings that front foot in, though. Can't be falling short because you can see Silva looking for that right hand again, just showing the difference in speed there, really in slow motion with that right hand and that left hook, Silva. Another good round for Kira and Conway. Yeah, starting to just turn the screw a little bit towards the end of that contest. And I, I mentioned the, the other champions d domestically. They're the ones that he wants to target this year. And, and I think before he moves on to, to world level, that is a sensible sort of plan of action, isn't it, for him? Yeah, definitely. He's kind of, you know, he's left us. He's gone over to the other side of the pond and had some big fights over there. And I think we heard it in the press conference, you know, he'd like to clean up dom domestically. I mean, look. Whether you would clean up or not is a different question, but that's his ambition to, to win some domestic titles and then push back over to the States and, and look at some big fights. But that he's got a lot to like about Kieran Conway. He ticks a lot of boxes, but now it's about going out there and executing it. I suppose if, if Felix Cash does head state side or whether Amber Williams comes here and those two eventually get it on or not, we're expecting Felix Cash to do a solid job on, on Signani for, for the European. He's a big, big favourite going into that fight. But if he doesn't fight Williams after that, you definitely see Conway challenging him for, for the European. That would be an excellent well, fight. He's there, thereabouts now. Um, he has a good enough reputation to go into those big fights. He needs this one just to, to exercise some demons, if you like. I don't think he'll go into this, you know, with too much of a a loss of confidence. He was in there with a good fighter in Williams and like I said, could have done more. Um, it's just about that change in mentality. That is all it is, Chris. So, you know, we've touched on it and so has Kieran. But again, getting into a ribbon behind his jab here, a little bounce in his step. Silver trying to get up the front foot now. Trying to let his hands go, but it's the lack of speed that is making things diff uh, easy, sorry, for, for Kieran to just look, miss the shot, step out of range and fire back with his own, just missing there, didn't bring his feet in, Kieran, but... 
far the superior boxer in there. Not to see a bit more or a few more angles from, from Kieran when he's got Silver backs onto the ropes, just stepping to the left and to the right, creating some more openings. Just standing in front of Silver when he's got him backed on the ropes. Good head movement, trying to draw out the lead of Silver so he can fire back the counters. Right hand just landed uh, off the break there. Silver just backed onto the ropes, just looking for that counter left hook, just finds the exit to the left hand side, but now he's close to being boxed into that corner. It's a good right example over the top. Good example of what I'm about to say. There's a lot of. Oh, that's a good run. Right. Sonic, he's, he's got up with the legs of Silver there. And Conway. The smother is working a little bit in the follow up there, but he has got the man in front of him hurt here. And is this where we see no more Mr. the Nice Guy with a minute on the clock in round number three? Silver just trying to fire back with that right hand over the top. Conway just loading up a little bit, looking for the big shots to put his man away. Left foot just knocks him all the way over. Right hand. Silver just tries to, to find an exit to his left hand side, but he's in trouble here. Right hand straight through the jaw. He dipped down to his right hand side. He's held the shots well. 30 seconds to survive in the third round, and Conway lasering in. Big one two there, and again the knees dip of Silver. Finds some space. He's on unsteady legs. Still looking to fire back. How smart is that at this stage? Are oh, the ropes keeping him up? Referee having a really good look at him with just over 10 seconds to go. Another stiff right hand comes in from Kieran Conway. Well, wow, did he do well to stay on his feet there, Silver? Big, big round for the Northampton man there. The, the Portuguese corner, very vocal there. But their man really under the cost. That was a good barrage. All started with the right hand, and once he had his man hurt, he was on him all over, all over him like a rash. And when you when you hurt, Terry, that minute can feel like a long time. Yeah, um, so we were unable to get his feet back underneath him, and uh, I feel like Conway were just trying not to burn out, but pick the shots. And sometimes it can be deceiving how wet your opponent is, and it's just making sure. You're not getting tagged by, by a, a cheeky shot as well. And of course, not blowing a gasket in the process. If, if your opponent's not as hurt as you think they are, putting too much into course, trying to finish them seconds. off. But he will feel well in control. And he may just set his Round four. That he can get the job done in the next three minutes. And given everything he said this week, he really will want to. Silver just wants to try and show Conway I'm not as hurt as you think I am wants to try and get his respect at the beginning of this round but he's pushed back pretty easily trying to find a little bit of solace on the ropes yeah trying to creep forward again Silver but it's just that lack of speed with foot and hands far too easy for, for Conway just moving out of range firing back with that uppercut just missing I like to see him target the the body with those straight shots again, Kieran. I see Silver, he's leaning back. He's quite difficult to hit with that jab to the head at times, just because he doesn't lean back out of range. But if he was to fire downstairs and then follow back upstairs, he might have some more success. But I mean, th this does tie in with his well, what he was saying, Kieran, beforehand. You know, he wanted to look spiteful, and he has so far. Changing the levels there, that right hand to the body was a good shot. Not offering much now, Silva. Again, because every time he lets his hands go, he's getting countered. So that lack of speed from the Portuguese man. Yeah, he's in safety first mode now. Conway trying to bait something out of him. Just lands a little short right hand as they get up close, but the sting, what there was of it in the early stages of the contest, is now gone. 
and Conway will know that he's got to pick the right shots at the right time and he can get his man out of there. Let's see a few more feints from Kieran to draw out that lead of the Portuguese man where I said, you know, Silva's hand speed really is far superior. Oh, sorry, Kieran's is far superior in comparison to Portuguese man. So, oh, it's a good right hand. Good work. Yeah, just caught him a couple of times on the turn there. Silva does tend to, to step clockwise. It's his preferred movement. And Conway's walked him onto a couple there. And as his legs slowed, lands a nice right hand off the ropes. That was a shot we were talking about in the Leon Bauer fight. A little right hand coming from Silva, knocking the mouthpiece out of Kieran Conway. Yeah, Silva just seeing that right hand coming there, just keeping that, that left hand high and tight. And he's, uh, well, potentially weathered the worst of the storm then. Yeah, just trying a little bit too hard in that round, Kieran. You know, really loading up with the shots instead of letting them flow, popping the shots out, changing the pace of the shots would be ideal. And he's just being able to weather, like you say, the storm silver, take the sting out of the shots, leaning back. Yeah, just smothering his work there as well, Chris. Come back with that right hand. I think the gum shield comes out shortly after. Does he still relax a little bit more, Kieran? Corners, 10 seconds. Second test, round five. Good work around the side there with that right to the body. Needs to come up through the middle. After he's thrown those right to the body, see the reaction from Silva. Brings his arm around, trying to protect from that right to the body. So, fire up with the right uppercut. I mean, credit to George Silva, 39 years old. I mean, I'm 40 years old and I popped a calf going for a 5k run today. So, <laughs> never mind getting in the ring with Kieran Conway. <laughs> Pay to see it though. <laughs> that was a nice right hand there. Did take the impact on the gloves, but he felt it and just sensibly exits and gets himself back to centre ring. Didn't want to stay trapped on those ropes for too long. Hard to underestimate how much the, the last couple of rounds probably taken a bit out of Kieran Conway too. He's put a lot into these shots trying to, to finish his man. I think he assumed at some point he would he would wilt and fade and, and he still may do. But he's been really stubborn. That was better. He was close to Silver Conway, but he didn't smother his work. He allowed some space at the nice left to the body as well. Just needs to keep this tempo going. Then let Silver off the hook. Keep popping the shots out. The more Silver opens up like that, the more opportunities there will be for Kieran Conway. When he's thinking safety first, he seems to be able to keep himself relatively safe. Again, just looking for that swinging right hand off the ropes. Conway, though, just keeping his distance. He's done well with it, Silver. Just to, though he's back on to the, the ropes. He got out of the red corner. He just steps his left foot to the side. I think Kieran should have just brought his right foot across and trapped him in the corner. But again, good pressure from Conway. Nice counter right hand there from Silver off the ropes. I think the tempo is uh, Silver's crypt tonight. He's got to be busy, Conway. Just don't take his foot off the gas. This is good, good pressure. Doesn't need to load up with the shots. It's got to be constant. 
you know, just maybe just touching him more with lighter shots in between exactly. the heavy work just to keep him occupied the skies when that big shot is on the way because at the moment this just posturing at long range and he seems to see a lot of the heavy shots coming and just be able to ride the impact of them and he's done well given where he was a couple of rounds ago silver he's just creeping into that territory of, of survival mode now for conway in charge that was good work you see there not smothering his work giving himself space to let the hands go Nice wire to the body, little step out of range, throw in the jab. This is where I'd like to see a few more angles, sort of Ricky Hatton-esque, skipping to either side and allowing yourself to find these openings, head and body. But yeah, it's just that pace needs to, to continue to be there, a sustained attack. And I think that uh, would be the end of Silva, who I have to give huge credit to. He's still in there, he's still trying, but he's second best in absolutely every department. Corners, 10 seconds. For Janae Bostan and Peter Kramer. Second out, still to come. Six. The Yorkshireman's first eight rounder. And then Aaron Bowen's pro debut against uh, Frenchman Matthew Gomez. All between now and seven o'clock. The main card starts with Gamal Yafai and Diego Alberto Ruiz. And Galau Yafai will be joining us for the next two contests as well. All to come here on Before the Belt. Welcome if you're just joining us, Kieran Conway in full control of George Silva, who's been stubborn the last couple of rounds when he looked like he may fade in the third. Conway is trying to really soften him up now. His legs have slowed considerably. He finds himself longer and longer periods of time backed up onto the ropes with uh, Conway trying to find the game-changing shot. Down in his money, Silva, that's for sure. He is. Welk just appearing on the, the forehead of Silva above the right eye and marked up around the left too. Cumulative volume of some heavy shots. Conway's been picking, just rakes the right hand under the elbow there and again, Silva just tries to fire back off the ropes. This is what I was asking for, Chris, just a constant pace. Just keep letting the hands go. You can see he's taking a bit of the power off of the shot, Conway, and that's just allowing him to let more go. Good jab to the body. Yeah, still seven minutes or so left of this contest to go. If anything is going to get silver, it's going to be that cumulative volume rather than a single shot. It looks like anyway at this point. Although oh, no, a right hand just comes around the back of the guard and his legs went momentarily then. Needs to go again, Kieran. Needs to let his hands go. Definitely felt that right hook, Silva. Good oh, jab. Nearly commentator's curse, wasn't it? Another right hand just off the ropes there. Conway knows the danger still present. He's adjusted his feet well when he's had him backed onto the ropes, kept his distance. At this stage now, 20 odd seconds to go in the sixth round. Silver will start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Certainly in survival mode, not offering much at all other than the cheeky left hook and right hand, but he's almost there now. And it'll make it a little bit more difficult for Kieran, who will, like you say, have to put his foot on the gas. That's what will, will start Silver unraveling and will eventually get the job done. But again, huge credit to, to Silver for hanging in there and giving it a go. you make of this Terry good action yeah great fight um I, I, I just I want Kevin to keep there keep the pressure there and uh, hopefully Silver don't get the confidence obviously no one's only two rounds left and I feel like Silver's in really in survival mode and just looking for the counter but Kevin just needs to keep that pressure and stay smart switched on and um, yeah see it through yeah that was the moment there the right hand that landed he just dipped down 
look from from our ringside position they were right above us like his legs just bit for a moment but uh, he's Gorlis, Simon Welsh taking a big golf there to our right hand side he knows just two Second rounds seven. round seven to go here There's a nice chopping counter right hand there. Yeah, you can see here, Silva. He has landed the right hand already, but the way he's shaped up here is, is almost letting Kieran Conway know, look, I'm going to fire back with something. And that's just stopped Kieran letting his hands go in this first minute. Well, he read it, didn't he? Just, yeah. He just he threw almost the faint jab, just dropped outside of it and threw his own. So really, you get the impression that Silva's got the energy for now is just to try and pot shot and look for that big single to try and change that course of the contest. And, and kind of do anything he possibly can to stop Kieran Conway coming forward. Those little feints, the way he sort of arcing that right hand as if he's going to let it go every time Kieran throws a shot. Just to stop him. Like I say, the, the light's at the end of the tunnel now. Love to hear that final bell. See, fainting with that left hand. Trying to frustrate Kieran Conway. Conway just steps across him again. Left jab to the body. Got him boxed in now, just looking for that second phase counter, finds it. Double left hook, neither landed with a lot of force though. See, that's where I like to see the straight shots to the body. Every time the silver's on the ropes, his defence is to lean back and avoid the shot. So if you start downstairs and work back upstairs, you're less likely to miss. Having said that though, every time silver has been hurt, it has been those cuffing hooks around the side of the guard. Silva just going Philly shell for a, a brief moment in defence mode, trying to roll and slide that right hand. Conway just rakes a, a left hand to the body and then upstairs. Let's do it. For the pressure that Conway has, has put on, Never looked at Silver, and, and he hasn't particularly looked like he's been out of time or, or really under pressure or wilting. A few spots where he's maybe been a little bit hurt, a bit buzzed, and had to survive, particularly in the third. But he hasn't looked like he's he's been crowded for space too much, given the amount that uh, the Conway's really stuck it on in these last few rounds. But look, you know, I you look on the record of Kieran Conway and there are only four stoppages and I say I do believe he's a bigger puncher than his record suggests and the only reason he hasn't had more stoppages in my opinion is because he loads up sometimes or oh, quite a lot I mean he you know he wants to impress well, the former 122 pound European champion Kamal Yafai back to winning ways last year Diego Alberto Ruiz, can he come and spoil the party? First contest of the night at Superfans and went over 10 rounds. Second for the So the last three minutes of this contest, Silva has negotiated the second half of this contest very well indeed. Conway has put the pressure on but unable to make a, a real dent in his man. Stiff right hand and Silva is showing the marks of battle on his forehead around the eyes. But he's held firm. Stop 
There'll be a sense of frustration of jaw from Kieran, but credit to his intent here. You know, he was forcing the pace throughout. He has looked for that stoppage and a little bit at times, a little bit predictable. Good work there, double left to it, followed by the right uppercut. But you, again, you do have to give Silva credit for hanging in there, leaning back, taking the sting out of shots. Was hurt twice with right hooks, still there, never went down. He's landed his fair share too. Has, yeah. Some nice counters with the right hand. And the left hook and it's a little late with his last couple of rounds but every time you think he's starting to fade he just fires back and has a moment to remind you that he's still there he's still looking for the win it's gonna have to come from something really really special now with less than a minute and a half on the clock Conway boxing him into the corner again he's just trying to ride those shots from that Philly shell stance trying to measure that distance and keep himself safe as well right hand over the jab Conway just steps across him again neglecting the body shots Kieran a lot of head hunting that's why Silva's been able to to defend against a lot of these shots 50 seconds to go for the Portuguese man to survive Oh, that brilliant right hand on the counter. Rock Silva back onto the ropes. And he tucks up and holds. And really sends him backwards. It was more a balance thing than anything. He kind of smiled as Conway piled in behind him. He's taken some of these shots really, really well these last eight rounds. Conway jabs to the body. Silva responds again. We've done well there, Kieran. He's glided out of range really sharply fired back he uses his opponent's force and momentum to make that hurtful shot <laughs> well, sinking him in right to the end of the eighth round and as you said there will be a little bit of frustration from him there he did want to get the stoppage but it was a dogged performance from him he was in control from start to finish he couldn't have put more into those but I think Silva once he knew he was going to be second best throughout the contest he was thinking safety first and that just did give him the chance to ride some of those shots and see a little bit more coming and he only really picked his work back in small bursts of action but fair play to him for hanging on yeah he was in Though he, he doesn't have a journeyman record, Silva, 21 wins, only seven losses, but he went into his shell a bit, Terry, didn't he? He was leaning back, avoiding the shots, didn't offer much, and that made it hard for Kieran to, to get the stoppage. He will be slightly frustrated, but there was that change in mentality, I guess. He was aggressive on the front foot, but there's more to come from Kieran. Right, I'm hearing David Diamante is ready with the result, let's head to him. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here in Nottingham, we go to referee Kevin Parker's scorecard. It reads 80 to 72 for your winner, Kieran Two Class Conway. Nice round of applause for George Silva also, please. So a comfortable win in the end for, for Kieran Conway. And uh, Terry, it's been a pleasure to have you alongside us. You've got uh, another big fight coming up, haven't you? Yeah, Cecilia yeah. Breaker, so yeah. a legend in, in women's boxing. I mean, firstly, how did it feel to become champion again? What does it feel like to be sharing the ring with somebody like Cecilia? Oh, amazing. Um, it's great to be back on top, really. Um, last, last year back in, here in Nottingham, I, I'm, I've, I've fought Abilonada and just my comeback fight and after that I remember thinking I just want to get back in the big fights and back on top and uh, that's what's happened in, in such a short time and um, I'll be in with a great uh, former champion and former undisputed and um, I think it's just a perfect fight for me to come back with. Brilliant, well we're looking forward to it, wish you all the very best, thanks for, thanks for joining us um, and have a great night here in, in Nottingham, Terry Harper ladies and gentlemen will be joined by Galau Yafai after this.
We got a telex that there is a positive doping control. And it concerns player number 10. La creencia esta que dio positivo por cocaína es errada. Que alguien lo, lo pergeñó no me cabe la menor duda. Ahora, ¿quiénes fueron? Créeme que me cortaron las piernas. Welcome back to the Nottingham Arena. Big night of action ahead. We've got two fights down here on before the bell and two to go. Janae Foss stand up next and then Aaron Bowen to close us out before we head to the other side of 7 o'clock for Kamal Defi against Diego Alberto Ruiz, Chef Clark and Israel Dupas, Gary Cully and Wilfredo Flores. Dalton Smith defending his 140 pound British title for the second time against uh, Eggham's Billy Allington and then the main event. And we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Lee Wood against Mauricio Lara. Good evening and welcome if you're just joining us here on Before the Bell. Chris Lloyd and Darren Barker. We've swapped Terry Harper out for the Olympic gold medalist. Now, I remember Galau, uh, how disappointed as you were when you went to the Rio Games and things didn't go well for you. It was a five long year wait uh, for you. How did it feel to finally realize your dreams in, in Tokyo? Yeah, it was great. Um, obviously, like you said, it was a long four or five years. Um, and the next year I added on, but I uh, finally got the job done, and, and yeah, it was great to finally do it. Brilliant. Um, Darren, how impressed were you with this young man? Yeah, what you saw of at the Olympic Games and what we've seen of him so far? Yeah, he's alright, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> no, exceptional. Tough, I mean, please. <laughs> no, 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 exceptional talent. I mean, what a great time to be going out of your fight. I mean, it's, you, you've got your whole career in front of you, and I guess you, you'll be looking to emulate, emulate the likes of what James Agal done and winning the Olympic gold and going on and winning world titles as a pro. Hopefully, um, you know, that's going to be for me. And Hopefully I can do it for other fighters in the, in the future. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I do my best. I train hard and I give them all. Let's talk about uh, the main event tonight. Lee Woods, as recently as probably two and a half years ago, was, was viewed as a solid domestic fighter and probably no more. He's turned his career around in his early 30s in ways that I, I imagine he's probably gobsmacked at. So to be in the position he is now, given where he was it's been a remarkable turnaround hasn't it yeah definitely if you look at us well i should say three four years ago he wouldn't have ever imagined being in the position he's in now um and he's such a nice fella i'm so happy that he's uh, in this position and hopefully he can, he can continue Let's talk about that that night against Zucan at fight camp of course he just come off winning the british title against uh, reese mole having joined ben davidson's camp Zucan hand picked him as, as a voluntary and the option of jordan gill or lee would he pick lee would and it was up Upgraded to, to the headliner in the garden because Conor Ben and Adrian Granada, originally slated for that night, had fallen through. I think we looked at it and thought, well, that could be an interesting contest. And there was a chance for Leewood's stock to rise. I don't think many people really gave him a chance. They certainly didn't think he was going to do what he did on that night. I mean, the general consensus was that Leewood would get overwhelmed by the work rate of Kanzu, who's non stop. Mm. They'd not stop letting his hands go. And he just nullified the threat by just. Ring, you know, great general ring general sip. The, the ring IQ was brilliant. The footwork was spot on, and he, you know, it was. Uh, you'd have to say a punch perfect performance. The way he got the stoppage as well. Oh, well look, done the to our lads in the gallery. They've got it yeah. up perfect. I mean, look, the, the the variation with the shots. And look at the spite. And Ben Davison saying he's one of the biggest punches he's held pads for and worked with. And you can see there that that was a great finish from Lee Wood. And the confidence that he gained from that fight was massive going into the continent. And Galat, let's talk about this was fight of the year last year. He was yeah. down early in the first round and this is the, the 12th and final round. There was always a sense that even though he was losing the battle, that he may win the war. And right at the death, he did this. Yeah, it was like a rocket story, weren't it? It was. Um, unbelievable. 
Yeah, incredible scenes there. Ben Davison has worked so hard and really they have to take a lot of credit as a team for, for turning yeah. his career and fortunes around. Tonight, though, presents an altogether different sort of challenge. Perhaps on paper less tricky than Mick Conlon, but I think in, in moment to moment, far, far more dangerous. Oh, he, he cannot switch off for a second. This, you know, it's high risk, high reward. And, you know, if he beats Lara, he's, you know, known as one of the best fighters in this country and in the world. Um, it's a very dangerous night, but Ben and Lee have seen something in Lara where they think, we can win this fight. But this man, I mean, at the media workout, the punches that he was hitting those pads with were frightening. And the way he's dispatching of his opponents with total disregard for what they're throwing. You know, I said it in the build-up, Lara does Lara. He just doesn't care. He just wants to entertain the crowd and, and knock out his opponents. And yes, there are vulnerabilities, but he will be tough to beat. Well, we talked about Lee Wood bursting on the scene against Zucan. Uh, Mauricio Lara burst on the scene against Josh Warrington in the eerie silence of, of behind closed doors boxing early in the, the pandemic. And uh, well, I, I think Josh Warrington was as gobsmacked as, as we were. Tried to walk through him early, got hit so clean and so hard and, and was concussed. It, it reminded us a lot of, of the Anthony Joshua Andy Ruiz first fight. And well, we, we've never seen anybody do that to him before. This was against Emilio Sanchez. Now, this is the fight yeah. where the highlight tell a different story to the three round contest because Sanchez was game as you like in this contest hurt Lara on a number of occasions but when he was badly oh. hurt he was really dangerous and well he's taken a fight around the referee out of the same blow there a little bit more dominant against Jose San Martin but Elliot Chavez has taken him out to the body Sanchez hurt him in spots he loads up heavily with each punch now and when he misses it will take a lot out of him and also means that if you can get past that big right hand there are opportunities to counter it. Absolutely and someone with the footwork and the timing and brilliant reactions like Lee Wood had has there the shots he'd been looking for he's a very good body puncher against Conlon I thought the body shots really sapped Conlon of the energy going down the stretch and I feel they're crucial the footwork and the shots to the body are keys to success for Lee Wood winning this one that uh, single jab to the body against Zhu Kan really neutralised his offence. He's a high volume puncher, kind of 12, 1300 punches uh, in a 12 round fight. Lara is, is reckless, he's wild, he's heavy handed, but he's probably never going to have been hit with someone that punches like Lee Wood. How important is it for him to get his respect early in this fight? Um, it's very important. Um, like we said, it's a lot with all these big punchers, they don't like being hit back. Um, and we've seen with Emilio Sanchez, um, he got hurt a few times, so he can really hurt himself. I think sometimes as well, uh, uh, a fighter's main asset can be their downfall. With Lara, he punches so hard, he can be a little bit predictable with the shot. Loads up and, and like I say, has total disregard for his opponent. He leaves openings. So sometimes, like I say, when you're, you're a big puncher, you can become a little bit gung-ho and look for the big shots and neglect your boxing skill. That will play into Lee Wood's hand. All right, gents, well, great to speak to you about this. Lots uh, to look forward to uh, ahead of the main event too, and lots coming up on the zone over the next month or so. Take a look at this. From Liverpool. time and I'm here to make a statement at the 140-pound division. I've been in like a rebuild process. I'm happy with it, yeah. I'm ready to go with some of the big names. That is a statement victory. In April, two women painted New York City both red and green. And whilst the tricolor wave victorious that night, the true winner was that of women's boxing. A sport once looked down upon by many rose up and took center stage. Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano became the first women to headline Madison Square Garden. Women can sell, women can fight, and we put on a hell of a show. So yes, they danced their dance, the event of the year. But that, that was on American soil. It's only right to run it back again, don't you think? The greatest female fighter of all time! Look at the Puerto Rican sensation go! Oh, Say it loud.
proud to all you know because the queen of iron she's coming home well what a fight we've got in store for you may 20th in dublin taylor serrano 2 and uh, well before that lots to come on the zone here's what's coming up still tonight we've already had sam maxwell Victory, victorious over Sean Cooper. Five points and Kieran Conway just could not get rid of George Silver over eight rounds of super middleweight. Today, Bostan up next against Peter Kramer before Aaron Bowen makes his debut against Frenchman Matthew Gomez. We are ready to bring Bostan and Kramer to the ring. So let's hand you over to David Diamante. Continues with an eight round super welterweight attraction. Set to make his ring walk from Budapest, Hungary. Please welcome Peter Gishpapo Kramer. Up from Budapest, UK fight fans may remember him as Josh Kelly's comeback opponent after the David Avenician defeat. He was full of it in the build up, believed he could walk Kelly down and hurt him as the Russian did. But Sharpness meant that the distance and counter punching that night there were too much of it. But he had fleeting moments of success when he did manage to get up close against Kelly. I think that's probably going to be his best chance against Janae Bostan here tonight. Kelly and Sam Eggington, the only notable names to stop him. He tends to finish on his feet too. He's a stubborn man and has taken the likes of Mark Dickinson and Jack Flatley the distance as well. A very good test this for Janae Bostan in just his fifth contest as a professional. And now entering the arena, please welcome the young undefeated knockout artist from Rotherham, Junaid Bostan. Well, it's always important not to get too ahead of ourselves when assessing the future potential of young prospects, but it is hard not to get excited when you see a talent like Janae Bostan, 20 years of age with a toolkit that for many fighters is unteachable no matter how long they've been in the game. He's got quiet swagger to back it up as well. Grew up around the Ingalls gym and you can see that influence in his style. He's a very competent switch hitter, creates power from all angles, both stances and importantly, he's got brilliant guys and some role models around him from one of the best boxing gyms in the country. Grant Smith said to us before his debut, he'll no longer be a secret after tonight and he was absolutely right. There's a long way to go for this young man but if tonight is your first time watching him you'll soon know what we do and that is that he has an awful lot of potential. Ladies and gentlemen from Nottingham, England, live on the zone. We are set to go with our next bout of the evening, and it's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stage Front, and JD Sports. Introducing your third man of the ring at the sound of the bell from Harrow, A star scoring referee, Mr. Kieran McCann. Now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the super welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black and gray. He scaled 11 stone, one pound. His professional record, 12 victories, seven defeats, three draws, with eight of his 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Budapest, Hungary. Please welcome Peter Kishpapo Kramer. Kramer. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the white with the black trim. He also scaled at a trim and ready 11 stone, one pound. His young professional record thus far, perfect. Four fights, four victories, all four victories coming by way of knockout. Here is the two-time amateur national champion fighting out of Rotherham. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Junaid Bostan. Bostan. Come on, Bostan, can you come? 
Right, boys, listen up. You both know the rules. Obey my commands at all times. When I tell you to break, break cleanly, take a step back, throw no punches. Keep your heads out of the way, and most importantly, protect yourself at all times. Shake hands. So the first scheduled eight rounder for 20-year-old Janae Bostan. In the white shorts trimmed with black on your screen. Stopped all of his first four opponents, but he's done some good rounds in the process. 19 in total across those. For the first round. And the last three opponents, he stopped in either the fifth or the sixth round, and he's shown good conditioning to that point. Can Peter Kramer take him a little bit further? He has certainly got enough about him to keep Bostan interested, and that is an important for a young man like him. Darren, I know you identify a little bit of the younger version of yourself in Janae Bostan. He's got a taskmaster like you had in Tony Sims in Grant Smith in his gym. Bundles of talent, but needs somebody in there that he feels is presenting a little bit of danger, but he has started fast. Yeah, he does, and Kramer does look to fire back. Under pressure, usually doesn't look up to there. But yeah, Janae, an exceptional talent, lives and breathes it, works so hard, does what he's told in the gym, always looking to, to improve, listening, learning, and that's what's important, is that the confidence that he uses every time he gets into the ring is impressive. Stiff jab, and well, Kramer already knows he's in with somebody with real talent, he looks hesitant and he's having to cover up tight because of the counters and the speed of them and a right hand crash over his jab there. The boss down already got him pinned to the ropes and he's starting to go through the gears. Eddie Hearn has taken his seat ringside. He's been so impressed with this young man since his debut just a few months ago. Sonny Edwards in his corner alongside Grant Smith, the IVF World Flyweight Champion. Now we're here supporting Dalton Smith a little bit later on as well. And Sonny Edwards said, the most talented fighter I've ever trained alongside in a gym. And that is saying something. That was a lovely right hand over the jab of Kramer from Boston. 20 years old, he's still maturing. He's only going to get stronger. But it's that confidence. Look at him standing in front of Kramer. Total disregard for, for what Peter Kramer's doing. Just switching to Southpaw, doesn't opt to throw a shot. Back behind the jab. Impressive stuff from Janae. He's trying to draw out the lead from Kramer here. That's when the feint comes into play. You can see the difference in hand speed already. Well, no sooner did Grant Smith ask in his corner for the body than he obliged. He's listening, boxing to a plan, and he's been totally dominant through these first three minutes. Kramer looks bamboozled at times in there. Oh, the stiff right hand, and his hands are in position. Kramer knocked him right back into the corner. Very, very impressive first round for Janae Moss and the last. Great round. Um, you see him throwing a jump to the body as well. He's just trying to set him off, chipping away at him. Um, yeah, flawless round. Yeah, good entertaining stuff again from Janae. That's what we expected from him and what we've seen so far. And there he is, bread and butter there, just missing the jab straight back, swaying backwards and firing back with a accurate, sharp right hand. There's no power in that whatsoever. That's, you know, just speed and timing that's hurt Kramer there. Credit to the Hungarian, he survived, but look at the, the red in him over that left eye already. Well, he said at the, the press conference on Thursday, he said, I wasn't known as much of a, a puncher in the amateurs, but his timing, and his distance, and his speed, that he's really starting to put a dent in the opponents. He's very, seconds. very surprised if uh, Kramer's still standing in seven rounds of time. Round he was chin checked a couple of times by Athanasios Glinos, the Greek fighter he, the front foot south point he was in against last time. And uh, Darren, you called that fight. Uh, he, he took a, a few, was lined up well by the Greek fighter, but he, he took them very comfortably. Didn't look like he was fussed about getting hit. It's always good to see the first time that a young prospect is just chin checked, but uh, he hasn't taken very much so far at all. Someone like Bostan will look better 
when he's got opponents firing back. It's very hard to look good against Journeyman, so he'll be glad that he's in there with guys with winning records, looking to, to get the scalp of Bostan on their record. Because you can see the, the speed and the reaction from Junaid and the power already at only 20 is very impressive. See him working the, the body, finishing upstairs, good variation. Again, you see an uppercut, straight right, followed by the left hook. Trying to soften Kramer around the body. You can see the reddening around the left side of Kramer's ribcage. Hurtful shots. Big part of the problem here, Galao, is Kramer doesn't seem to know where the attacks are coming from or what to expect next. Yeah, definitely you see how fast uh, Janae's attacks are and, you know, you see him fainting as well. He's throwing the right hand around the body, around the side of the head. Um, yeah, he's looking good at the minute. And it's constant front foot pressure as well from Janae. Doesn't give his opponent a breather. Other than when look, he steps back here. Kramer trying to mount an attack, back he comes on the front foot. Good variation again, lovely right hand to the body, talking to Kramer. Really Good does look triple like he's left. Enjoying himself and just chops that short right hand through. Left hooks him on the turn, a little smile back from Kramer there. And now he switches and he does so seamlessly to Southport. He's so confident as well. Oh, lovely right hand, and again, good work. Still 40 seconds to go, it's time here. Kramer bravely firing back with the right hand, he takes his feet well out of range. Well, you talk about confidence. Darren to be setting up lead right hands, pull counters, switching within the first two rounds. It says everything about how relaxed he is and how much he's enjoying the process so far. Lovely. Knuckles over on the right hand. Finish that combination. Kramer is so conscious of where the attacks are coming from. He's keeping that guard and the earmuffs on. You hear Grant Smith saying, expect him to chuck there. He was just tapping him with a couple of arm punches there, expecting the, the return to come. He did take the bait, Kramer, but another good round from Boston. See every fight, just getting more and more confident, Chris. More and more, more and more confident every fight. I know you spent plenty of time in there, Jim, sparring with Sonny Edwards. He, he, he rates you as among the best he's ever shared the ring with. He says there's potentially a collision course for you down the line, but you know how good the talent is in this gym, Dalton Smith alongside them um, as, as well. It really does help to, to keep this young man on track and, and show him the work that is required if he's going to reach the level that I think he's got the potential to. Yeah, definitely. You know, Corners, there, Jim, ten seconds. Uh, numerous times in Janae's over there training, head down. Um, seconds up. Yeah, like you said, collision course. Um, I'll keep winning. Round three. So into the third we go. Boston in full control through the first two rounds. Peter Kramer baffled at times by the angles and the precision with which he's being caught. Even when he's got the hands up, Boston just seems to find the, the gaps and, and pick him open. Great distance as well. Really relaxed long shots there, just turning through them at range. Just jacking the jaw of, of Peter Kramer. And again, he just switches to Southport, starting to, to turn through those hooks up close. Swinging a miss from, from Kramer, being warned by the referee not to 
tie up the, uh, the free hand. Lovely rear left uppercut from Southpaw. Again, just switches seamlessly. You almost don't notice him switch. You just suddenly realise he's standing in the other stance. Yeah, I think he's just used to it. Um, you know, a lot of the guys from Sheffield are all doing that, that switch hitting. Um, but you can see Remind, no it's reminiscent, I guess, of the, the best work of Kid Galahad. Of course, of Nassim Hamed, who yeah. he grew up idolising as, as a kid, who so knows all about him. Uh, see that ingrained in his style. But what, what's been added to that is the brilliant fundamentals of, of Grant Smith. We were at breakfast with him, uh, Lee Eaton, and, and his son Reggie, who's uh, been taking up a bit of boxing and just watching Grant teach him a few things up close. You realise the, the attention to detail, just how passionate he is about this game and uh, well he's got a kind of three strike policy with his fighters if you don't turn up to a session you get a strike if you miss another one it's a serious conversation if you miss three you're, you're out no questions asked but in his entire career the Steel City gym France has only had, ever had one fighter leave him voluntarily and he returned less than six months later huge passion and a, and a father figure to his fighters and he's bred a, a brilliant stable who are really starting to realise their talents across the weight divisions. We'll see one of his brightest stars, his own son, in action, in our chief support later on. As Bostan picking Peter Kramer apart as he steps forward, big smile on his face. And they touch gloves at the end of round three. And right, it just looks like he's got experience years beyond what he has and it's good as well he's getting good rounds you know um, he don't need to knock out everyone you know two three rounds you want to get the rounds you want to get experience um, and I'm sure we'll get that now well one man that's got people talking in the 135 pound division is Ireland's Gary Cully no doubt he'll be chewing Eddie Hearn's ear off for a spot on the Casey Taylor Amanda Serrano two undercard on May 20th but tonight he has got business to attend to the New Yorker, Alfredo Flores, unbeaten in 10. How much resistance can he provide? Another very adept switch hitter. This sharp shooting tool. Hegan Southpaw is really starting to peak under the guidance of the excellent Pete Taylor. That one will be round four. third from the top of the bill. A little bit later on, live on the zone. But right now, Janae Bostan in full control of Peter Kramer through four. This is the round that Josh Kelly stopped him in. Come back opponent after the Avenesian fight, of course, a little while ago. And like tonight, he took a lot of stick early and seemed to take it well and then just suddenly wilted. Great buddy. There'll be some statement if Bostan could get it done in this round as well. But he looks like he's in no rush. He's enjoying himself. He's just picking the shots that he needs to pick. You just got to keep chipping away, chipping away, um, slow him down, so we can get him over. That's really interesting, you can actually hear, you can actually see him thinking about what Grant Smith was saying to him. Yeah. He was talking to him about just adjusting his, his range, and you can actually see him just pause and, and make the adjustment there. It's not particularly noisy in here, but it, it tells you he's laser focused in on the instructions he's getting in his corner. Oh, Grant's very vocal, <laughs> very vocal. Yeah. Lovely left hand to the body and then just sticks one straight down the middle. Really turning the knuckles over on those shots. Back to Kramer up again. Uppercut from Southport. Starts oh, great to really shot. go through the gears here. And now just switches to Orthodox and Kramer just feels like he's surrounded at the moment. Right hand just turns his chin. He's held firm under some heavy fire. Pretty rare to see a toolkit like this from, from one start, but the amount he's able to do from both Orthodox and Southport doesn't overuse the switch either. Everything's with a purpose. Using good angles as well. He's not staying in front of him. Brilliant oh, shots. Lovely right hand of the combination. Really sent Kramer back onto his heels and he smiled through his guard there. I think you will really start to feel the accumulation of these. He's reddened and marked up on every part of his face so far. And that is testament to kind of angles and precision. Brilliant oh, uppercut. Brilliant uppercut. Up the cut there. Just lifted the head up. And Janae Bostan really has made a point in this round. Sonny Edwards 
Seven for now. A grin on his face because he just knows how good this young man is and he's enjoying watching what he's seeing. We wish uh, his stable mate Nico Lavaz as he just takes the <laughs> one of the most noticeable punches that Kramer's has thrown in the contest, one of the only ones that's connected, just clips on the top of the head. Wish Nico Lavaz all the best, he was due to be on this portion of before the bell, but he got a sickness bug uh, overnight a couple of days ago and has had to, to pull out another very good young prospect, very well scored too under Grant Smith's tutelage. And he'll be back, no doubt, in the coming weeks. Lovely car. In the full counter right hand from the orthodox stance there with the full counter left from Southport and the variety of his work when he's turning through those shots long spiteful and that uppercut right hand there really rocked Kramer back onto his heels and you know, he saw that the grin of acknowledgement through the guard <laughs> Quarters, 10 seconds. Second Round five. Josh Kelly, of course, putting the performance of uh, his career to date against Troy Williamson to become the British champion at 154 pounds. And in his comeback fight, he was in full control of Peter Kramer. And I argue that Bostan has made him look even worse tonight. And that is some statement for a novice prospect of 20 years of age. He is boxing absolute rings round him. Fully in the flow now, just fainting with the feet and the hands to offset the rhythm of Kramer, pot shotting him. He'll be doing all his can to, to stop him as well, you know, after Josh Kelly stopped him and was it the fourth round? Kramer's we did. got to try and pile forward and, and push him off balance and, and try and out-muscle him up close, but very easier said than done. But standing at range as he is, he's just giving it to Bostad all his own way here. He just doesn't know what's coming and where it's coming from. His boss now just picks him apart to the body again. Kramer looks weary as he eats another jab. Eddie Hearn is watching on ringside, no doubt, imagining the, the potential plans that could unfold for this young man in the future. He will no doubt be a, a stellar supporting cast for Dalton Smith on what is expected to be his rise through European and towards world level in the coming years. But I think the potential of this man, he could be sent to stage himself before too long. Lovely uppercut again from Southport with the rear hand, just fires the right hook off of it. And Peter Kramer is trying to will himself forwards here, but he's walking into the fire doing so. He is, he's coming forward as well and he's just eating more. Um, I think Janae's good, he's good on the back foot. I'm not coming forward at the minute. Um, he's on the back foot now. Very slighted with the feet there, covering ground so quickly. Double left hook, body then head. Beautiful step around him off the, the two punch combination to create the angle and go again. Now just trying to bait him into something as Kramer comes forward again. That uppercut just shoveled into the body. And we've got some very good young prospects in the UK that haven't come through the Olympic podium squad. I've no doubt that our people will talk about you as one of the, the shiny lights of fighters that, to come in the next few years but guys like Bostan, Adam Azim, Hopi Price, Dennis McCann, Shiloh De Freitas all between 20 and 23 years of age showing such well-rounded professional skill sets already and we're lucky to watch a lot of boxing up close 
week in, week out. You know when you're watching somebody very, very special. And without overhyping Janae Bostan, he is very, very special. And speaking of special, there's your brother. Back in action for the first time this year, Diego Alberto Ruiz. How's he been today? Yeah, he's been all right. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's not had um, the best times in the last few years, but uh, he'll be looking to get back to winning ways tonight and hopefully he can. Yeah. He knows he made a, a lot of mistakes in the Jason Cunningham Round fight six. for sure. He's looking to correct them. He's linked up with new trainer Jamie Moore, which I know has been a big shift for him, moving his life a little further up north. And I'm sure for yeah. you as well, it's been strange not having him around for, for long periods of time. We'll see how that partnership goes live on the zone. 7 o'clock, Gamal Yafai against Diego Alberto Ruiz. 10 round of schedule at £122. And into round six of eight here for Janae Bostan and Peter Crane. The Crane has done the 10 round distance on plenty of occasions. I think six, in fact. And Bostan, this is the, the furthest that he would have gone if they complete these six rounds. And as you mentioned earlier, certainly not a bad thing for him to get some decent minutes in the back. 19 rounds as a professional so far with those four stoppages. His conditioning's look really, really good. Barely out of breath. And he's been really putting his hands together too. Just takes a little jab from Kramer on the turn. There's no two ways about it though. Janaid would love to get him out of there and he'd be trying his utmost best to. But the rounds are good. Um, if he does eight rounds, it is not too bad. That's count to right hand again. Kramer just tucks up tight. Kramer doing everything he can to try and offer some resistance here and fire back, but it's it's so dangerous when he does let his hands go and he's so wary of doing so. The speed at which the counters come back, he just can't see them. He chips away up close with Bostan. Almost wants to, to try and offer him something in at this kind of range. He's working the body well, just stepping around him. Oh, just quite a stiff right hand there from Kramer. Best punch of the fight landed for him so far. Just needs to be careful. Great body shots. Working with the same hand there. Hook off the jab hand and then just work the other flank with the right, does so again and then chops upstairs. Constantly changing the levels up and down. It's exhausting to, to fight knowing you can't really land clean and he's going to hit you from pretty much wherever he wants with pretty much whatever he wants. As evidence there with a lovely lead screw shot. Great body shot again now. Switches off a bit too, yeah. So confident, isn't he? really is. Well, Darren Barker rejoins us at the, the commentary desk and, and Janae Bostan has put on an absolute masterclass the last two or three rounds and even off doing a couple of bits for, for the zone. So I won't ask you what you're making of it. What I will we'll, we'll say is Peter Kramer's face <laughs> tells the story. Tells the story. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's been absolutely sensational. <laughs> Dan, we've missed you, mate. I'm about to put, about to put the shift in now when you've been gone. Oh, he's hard work, Chris, isn't he? It's the most I've ever been speak in about seven years. <laughs> he's much easier than you are. Both star, Chris. <laughs> well, that's the first time I've seen him remotely breathing in a contest so far. We're heading into the seventh round, which will be the furthest that he's gone so far. Quarters, 10 seconds. Second out. He hasn't budged so far. Round well. seven. And how entertaining to watch Janae Bostan has been so far. Into round seven we go. If you can name a punch from either stance, he's thrown it and he's landed it in the first six. 
from what I've seen of Kramer in the past, I've seen him with some of our lads. If you allow him to get into a rhythm, he can be a difficult fighter to face. And from what I'm hearing, it doesn't seem like Janae's giving him any opportunities whatsoever. Not breathing heavy at all. I see him in the corner there, he was talking, listening to Grant Smith. Even though he's in uncharted territory, as far as rounds are concerned. Very bright future for this young man. Out for as Kramer just dropped the, the right hand and he shook his head, but he did feel it. And his legs just starting to betray him a little bit there as Boss now just touching him with that right hand lead from South Paul. Left uppercut, left foot round the side of the guard. Oh, Kramer yeah. starting to reach there. Left hand landed, and the legs really went. The referee having a good look at Kramer, and he's absolutely right to step in there. And what a finish from Janae Boss down. Well, I missed a big part of that fight, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad I didn't miss the finish because that was impressive. A very, very good work there from, from the referee. He just kept a, an eye on Kramer because he was rocking and rolling and probably one or two shots away from being badly hurt there. And Janae Bostan knew it too. He gets another round in the bank. He's completed seven thus far. That takes his total, I think, to 26 overall with five straight stoppages in his first fight. The perfect balance between getting the mileage in and the experience with some good opponents and stopping all of them in the process, Galal. Yeah, and we forget he's only 20 years old as well. Um, he had a, it was a brilliant performance, good stoppage, um, good experience as well with seven rounds he did there. Um, so yeah, it's perfect really. If I, was, if I want to knock someone out, it's good that he did it in the seventh round, not in the second or third round. And you can see what getting the stoppage meant to Janaid as well. You can see him, he, he was celebrating the fact that I think he stopped Kramer. You see it. He's over the moon. He wanted to go 5-5-5 five, five, and, five, and he's done just that. And if you'd seen what the stick Kramer's taken the last three or four rounds, the fact that he's protesting says a lot about him as a man, as a fighter too. He wanted to carry on there even though he really was moments from, from being finished. The fair play to him for sticking around as long as he did, but it was only one winner from start to finish in that contest. A brilliant clinic and the icing on the cake for Janae Boston. A seventh round stoppage. Formalities to be read out by David Diamante shortly before we see the professional debut of Aaron Bowen up against five and four Frenchman Matthew Gomez. the main card to start live on the zone 53 minutes time here's David Diamante ladies and gentlemen referee Kieran McCann calls a halt to this contest the official time of the stoppage one minute and 30 seconds of round number seven your winner by TKO he's still undefeated and the knockout streak continues June the knockout streak continues, but actually it isn't the most important thing. Everything else that led to that point. You're a boxing fan and you know what you're watching. You know you've seen someone very special and I think he's just going to get better and better. Janae Bostan moves comfortably to 5-0 with five inside the distance. No doubt we'll be seeing him in the coming weeks back out again. At the young age of 15, he was destined for great things. Oh! oh. oh it's, it's all over. over! It's over! He knocked him out cold! Oh, no! Oh, nice shot! Go off with Canelo, pound for pound, best fighter in the Thank world. You. <laughs> Thank you. Canelo is the beast. You can box at range, you can box up close. I honestly believe nobody can beat Canelo Alvarez. Okay, welcome back. 
Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a big shout out for the champion Sonny Edwards in the house right here. And then when he comes back, I'll go. Okay, welcome back to the Nottingham Arena. Three fights down here on Before the Bell wins for Sam Maxwell and Kieran Conway earlier on in the show. We've just seen an absolute clinic from young super world to HNA Bostan picked apart Peter Kramer, who's a, a very solid, competent fighter over seven rounds before stopping him with a round to go. Coming up next, the debut of excellent amateur Aaron Bowen, who's boxing at light heavyweight in the unpaid code, now at middleweight in against the Frenchman Matthew Gomez. To bring them to the ring, as always, your master of ceremonies, let's head to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with our next contest and now making his way to the ring from France, Mathieu Gomez. So straight on with the action then, and here's five and four, Matthew Gomez, a, a compact pressure fighter from St. Etienne. He stopped everyone he's beaten so far, but every time he has faced someone with a winning record, he's been dealt with fairly handily. He's quite short, tends to box between 154 and 168, so he may look a little undersized here. Aaron Bowen is a, a big guy, but expect him to try and walk Bowen down, crowd his space and, and force him to work. I think you may find that's exactly what Aaron Bowen wants him to do. We should have a front fight on our hands for how long this one lasts. And now, set to make his very first ring walk as a professional from Coventry, the Team GB star, the Commonwealth Games medalist, the five-time amateur national champion, Aaron Bowen. Well, David Diamante reading off some of the accolades for this man, a brilliant amateur 81 kilo fighter, loves to stand and train, has arguably the contest of the Commonwealth Games against Taylor Bevan, he fell, well, he fell short by, well there was still nothing in it frankly, and it deserves to be the final, he kept away with a bronze in the end, he made his good decision to turn over Galan, somebody you know well too. Yeah, um, Aaron was uh, on the squad, on, on the back end of my career actually, um, he did brilliant in the Commonwealth, and there's one thing as well, he has a lot, he brings a lot of people, um, I just saw the Commonwealth, um, Ladies and gentlemen from the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham, England, live on the zone. We are set to go with a special super middleweight, pardon me, middleweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. We're sponsored by Betfred, Stagefront, and JD Sports. Introducing the third man in the ring at the side of the bell from Newark, scoring A-star referee Kevin Parker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing scheduled in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he wears the white with the red and black trim. He scaled 11 stone, 13 pounds. His professional record, five wins against four defeats, all five wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of St. Etienne du Bois in France. Please welcome the Luxembourg super middleweight champion, Mathieu Gomez. Gomez and his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He scaled 11 stone, 11 pounds. He wears the navy with white and gold trim. Tonight, he makes his much anticipated professional debut fighting out of Coventry. Here is the Team GB star, the Commonwealth Games medalist, and the five-time amateur national champion. Both know the rules, I expect a clean fight. Remember to obey my commands at all times, above all, protect yourselves at all times. Touch gloves. Thank you. Well, it was a, a brilliant atmosphere for his last amateur contest. But for him, what would have been a home 
Commonwealth Games, not too far from where he grew up in Coventry. And he's brought the fans here as well. Brilliant reception for his debut. For the first round. We talked about the weight. He was uh, 178 pounds equivalent in the amateurs. He weighed 164 on the scales yesterday, which would have been a new experience for him. Of course, holding 178 or 81 as it was in the amateurs for a week of international competition. And, and Galan right in thinking that they tend to keep the fighters within sort of three or four pounds of, of fighting weight so that it isn't such a, a drain on the body but come down 13 or 14 pounds lighter here he's a big man for this weight isn't he he is and uh, as you see his style is a front friendly style um he comes forward um got a good prospect in aaron and like i said before he brings a lot of people in commentary yeah good impressive start so far from bowen what i'd noticed watching Gomez in the build-up he tucks up well but he does leave openings round the body and we've seen already and again Bowen landing that right to the body but watch out for those Gomez very sharp very accurate puncher is Bowen cutting off the ring really nicely already just fizzes that right hand under the left elbow then the left under the right Very composed, Bowen. We're getting carried away. Everyone wants to uh, impress him. Dave, you love to left to the body. Mm. Oh, Beautiful shot. Down with, Five, I mean, 30 on the floor. He's badly hurt here. He doesn't eight, look like he's going to make it. He could be all over. Within a minute and a half, Aaron Bowen on his debut. Fabulous performance in front of a partisan crowd. Well, he was brilliant at the Commonwealth Games in securing bronze. He will be so relieved that things have gone to plan here on his debut. And a body shot that has taken the wind completely out of Matthew Gomez's sails. And uh, for the Frenchman, not the first time he's faced partisan support. He's in it with a good Spanish prospect in Jose Luis Navarro. He's got a good following himself through the Cordoba Football Club. He's boxing tonight, in fact. but much like in that contest he was taken out in two just didn't have the resistance to stand up against this man very big very strong and from what i've heard from the team across gb the support staff and other boxers he'll stand and trade with absolutely anybody glove definitely i've, I've seen Aaron spa a number of times and um i like to watch body shots he throws and you can see he was setting up that left up to the body um but yeah he's exciting and you know from road with him well, I think Eddie Hearn will quite like what, what he's seen then. He, he likes the ticket seller for obvious reasons. It's, it's a business for him, but he'll like the performance too. This is often, Darren, a, a breeding ground and a, a proving ground for young prospects before the bell. We've seen a couple of really good ones tonight. Yeah, we really have. And uh, big tick boxes ticked. As far as Eddie's concerned, with Aaron Bowen, the tickets and the performance, and, and the way he set that up to the body, Head brings the hands up, drops that left to the body. I was just so saying it moments before that I'd seen Gomez and he tucks up well but leaves openings to the body and we see that there. Brutal shot and that really took the wind out of the sails and no recovery whatsoever from Gomez there and this man will be over the moon with his debut. So we're just waiting for the official particulars. Here's David. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kevin Parker calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 35 seconds of round number one. Your winner by knockout. Well, brilliant minute and a half there from Aaron Bowen. Been out of the ring for the best part of eight months. And what a way to return on a big night here in Nottingham, Darren. Yeah, spot on. He'd be absolutely over the moon. He would have dreamt of his debut. I see him in the hotel actually a couple of days ago and I was talking to him about, you know, enjoy it. And before I could even finish, he said, yeah, look, you only get one debut. And it was a very good performance. Let's hear from the young man now. On second one, we're just 
get the mic sorted. I don't know if you can hear Chris. No, we can't, but yeah, look, you can see Aaron there over the moon, and rightly so. Great Aaron, performance. Aaron, many congratulations. You've been out of the ring for the best part of eight months. I know last time, regardless of how brilliant the fight was, would have been so disappointing for you at the Commonwealth Games. How does it feel to come back here so close to home tonight in front of this crowd and perform like that on your debut? Uh, it's amazing. You know, I wanted to soak it all in, but what an atmosphere and this just the start of what's to come. This is the kind of following that people don't really expect until they've had maybe 10 or 11 fights and even then it doesn't happen for some. Where does this support come from and how much do you owe for these people so far? Just a local boy just living his dream. These are all my people. These are all like family and friends to me so, you know, I know every single one of these people and I sit with them and have dinner so, you know, love to everyone who's come out. I really appreciate it and plenty more where that came from spoken to a lot of people on GB support star fighters they've all spoken very highly of you as a man as a fighter too Eddie before the bell often a, a proving ground for young prospects I know you're always sitting watching patiently to see who proves himself with a young man that can fight like this and bring support like this I know you'll be very excited yeah ticket selling's good but if you can fight it's even better and I tell you what we've seen some big followings Josh Warrington Lee Wood here tonight Johnny Fisher Aaron Bowen's got a mad lot from Coventry, and I'll tell you what, we're going to go all over the country, all around the world. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have a lot of fun with this young man. But as I said, he can really fight. It's not just the case of he's got big support. When you've got big support like this and you can really fight, then we've got something special. Not just a great fighter, but exciting, entertaining. And listen, when was the last time we had a big stadium filler from Coventry? I think we got one here. Nice slow journey. Lots to come. Yeah, they like that. Just a quick word on the weight. Uh, you boxed at 81 in the amateurs. You weighed in a 165 yesterday. How did you feel? Do you think super middle is where you'll settle? Uh, I think middleweight for now. I've made the weight comfortably, so I'm going to try middleweight. Good man. Congratulations tonight. Looking forward to seeing you out again. Well, living the dream, he says, Galau. Great debut for the young man. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I'm happy for him as well. You know, Ar Armin's one of the good guys. Um, you know, I've seen him around a lot on GB, and, you know, he deserves to have a, a great night like this with all his people here. Well, thanks for covering, lads. We're going to uh, head to a short break, and we'll be back after this. The very best action from around the globe. From free running to Formula One and everything in between. This is the place to see exceptional athletes doing extraordinary things. Whether it's near impossible challenges or life-changing journeys of discovery, these are the innovators pushing the limits of possibility. Incredible moments, unforgettable stories. Welcome to the new home of Action Sports. Welcome back. This is a professional. From the Nottingham Tina. Arena. The, uh, the fight's here before the bell done and dusted. We're now just heading over to the live broadcasting. Just over half an hour's time live on the zone. We've got five big fights for you on the card tonight. Let's take a look at them. Well, top of the bed, of course, Leeward and Mauricio Lara. But opening the show in just over half an hour's time, Galau, your, your brother Gamal, uh, linked up with new trainer, Jamie Moore uh, around six months ago just wanting to, to freshen things up being of course uh, floating between uh, Rob McCracken and, and Max McCracken who I know you've done a lot of work with too uh, over the years and you know very very well how has he described the last six months uh, to you a lot of change for him isn't it yeah it is and um, you know we're used to training together um, but it's good to go and see him do his own but it's good to go and see him do his own thing you know um, he's, had a few, he's had a few tough fights over the years um, but it's good to see he's got a bit of structure now um, and I think that's what he needed all along. Um, I'm sure we'll see tonight how that camp was, how the training with Jamie Moore is. You all know Jamie Moore's a great trainer. Um, I'm sure I'm sure we'll see tonight. Talk a little bit about the man he's facing tonight, Diego Alberto Ruiz from Argentina. 
He's had some decent scraps with a few notable British fighters. Shabazz Massoud boxed out of his skin uh, to beat him. The Lee McGregor fight was the one that will make people sit yeah. up because he gave McGregor a really, really hard fight. One that uh, I think most people weren't expecting to, and that's made people sit up. Mick Conlon dealt with him a little more comfortably uh, and, again, a much more complete approach than either of uh, the two before. But this is no gimme for, no, for Gamal Yepai. Absolutely not. He's a tough, rugged opponent, Ruiz. 23 wins, only six losses, and... 12 KOs on the record, you know, he, he's a winner, he's a, he's a warrior, and this is his opportunity. This is, his, again, we said it, uh, uh, you know, we've said it for, for years, the opponents, this is their opportunity to rip up the script and make a name for himself, and that's what he's got if he can beat Gamal. And if Ruiz has done his homework, he would, of course, look at the Cunningham fight, which is no doubt the worst night of, of Gamal Yafai's uh, career so far. It, it just didn't happen for him that night. He kept making the same mistake over and over, was walked onto that straight left hand. I, I know how despondent he was after that. It took him a long time to pick himself up, didn't it? Yeah, and, and, and you know, I'm his worst critic. Um, I'll give him it after that fight. <laughs> yeah, he said um, that, yeah. I, give, yeah, I literally, uh, he, he makes mistakes, obviously we all make mistakes. Um, but you know, hopefully he's, he's had a good camp, he's got a better mindset, he's got a new mindset. And hopefully, to win or lose fights now, he has to win these fights. And, and, the, and the good fights, but he just has to win them. So super bantamweight contest between Gamal Yafai uh, and Diego Alberto Ruiz to kick us off just after 7 o'clock live uh, on The Zone. Uh, Laura will be joined uh, by Tony Bellew um, and Carl Crotch, who of course had many a great night uh, in this arena. We'll come on to him in a little while. Another um, former GB stable mate, someone who brings uh, a lot of brilliant energy, but he's a really, really fun fighter to watch too. Um, is Chev on clock? Oh, it's a Chev. He's, um, he's a fun fighter to watch. Loads of energy. Um, now he's one of my mates and he's explosive. He, He's explosive, so don't blink. Israel Dufus, his opponent, Darren, has come in on late notice, has boxed at a pretty high level at 175 and clearly walks around a, a fair bit heavier. You, you can see there's a little bit more fleshiness to his physique there on the scales, but certainly doesn't look undersized at all. Looks strong, looks fit, and looks like he's been training too. And, and, and equally as explosive. You know, he, he commits to the fight, he gets straight to the centre of the ring, he tries to bully his opponent, so us knowing how Chev fights, that can only make for a war. Yeah, been in with uh, guys like Fan Long Meng, who you might re remember put Frank Bullioni into retirement at 175. Uh, Charles Voss, the American, who's 22 uh, and 0. Richard Rivera uh, as well. So we could have fireworks in our second contest of the night. We've seen Panama's Israel Dufus and Chevron Clark, who's looking to go 5 and 0. And like we saw Janae Bostan uh, a few moments ago, extend uh, his winning run to 5 and 0 with five straight knockouts. Uh, then it's the Irishman, Gary Cully, who no doubt will be itching for his spot on the Katie Taylor Serrano 2 undercard on the 20th of May in Dublin. Here he is. And another guy that Darren has brought brilliant energy uh, to proceeding. Signed with Matchroom uh, a few months ago under the guidance of Pete Taylor has again stepped up a level and shown that he has the potential to be a contender. If he's going to though, he's going to have to deal with a very good fighter in Wilfredo Flores tonight. Flores unbeaten, won a WBA Federation title in his last fight. Confidence is high, but I've been so impressed with Cully. I really have. Devastating against Balmedi. I mean, it was, it, it, I mean, he shot, shot Balmedi down to his boots, couldn't recover, and it was explosive. He's a top lad, and, and his ambitions are to be at the very top in a very, very tough division. To get Gary Cully on that Katie yeah. Taylor bill would be incredible. We're talking up here in big things, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing Gary tonight. Yeah, serious fighter uh, and a big test for, for him against the New Yorker Wilfredo Flores, uh, over 10 uh, for a WBA ranking place, third on the bill. Uh, and then, of course, Dalton Smith, we've just seen the brilliant Janae Bostan in action, Nico Lavaz, of course, out uh, earlier on this week. Uh, Smith has made already one uh, defence of his British 140-pound title, uh, needs to make another tonight, and then one more to win it outright. Do you think he can do it? Oh, of course. Uh, Dalton's one of the best prospects we have in Britain. Um, He's a great boxer, I boxed him all over the world for GB and you could see he's always had talent um, and he's getting, get, getting to show it finally. Billy Allington on the right, uh, a former Southern area and English champion. He's earned the right to, to fight for this title and he's an improved fighter in the last three years. I was watching back to the Daniel Egbenike fight in 2019 when he first fought and fell short for the Southern area. It was a close one and his only career defeat to date. Uh, and he has really tidied things up since then. He uses the ring a lot better. He's much more uh, tight defensively, but this is a, a different level to anybody he's been in with so far. That, that's the the point, the, the levels in this. You know, he's a very good fighter, Billy, but Dalton's exceptional. 
I, I, I've seen Billy call this his Rocky moment, and he's going to have to call on everything for this to go his way. He's got to get close. He's got to be rough. He's got to be rugged. He's got to take Dalton Smith out of his comfort zone. But that's going to be so difficult because Dalton really, really is a very good fighter. Just spoke to uh, Aaron Bowen uh, a few moments ago on the PA. For those of you just, just joining us, welcome to you, by the way. Uh, and, and Eddie mentioned that the great fan base and support that Bowen had brought. And he mentioned Josh Warrington, who is in the house tonight. And what a shock he had behind closed doors without that fan support against the Mexican Mauricio Lara, who was largely in obscurity at that point, but came in and ripped up the script uh, just a few months before Lee Wood did the same thing for his career. These are two fighters that we weren't talking about at the top level just two years ago. And it shows with persistence and the right opportunities and big performances anybody can turn things around at any moment in their career yeah definitely and it's, it's good to see um, you know I've been I've been well impressed with Lee Wood um, you can see where he's come from where he's now you know is in Nottingham his hometown um, setting out arenas it's just something that we all look to do to emulate um, and yeah I'm, I'm rooting for him tonight uh, also, Chris and Galau, he, he's backed up what he said. You know, against Kanzu, he said, I'm, you know, I'm going to put on a masterclass here. He did. You know, against Conlon, he said, if I'm still standing in that 12th round, I'll knock you out. He did. You know, he's called on Lara. He didn't have to pick Lara as this fight. I think some people may forget that. This isn't a mandatory. This is a voluntary. Him, Leewood himself, and Ben Davison, trainer, see something in Lara, as we all do. There are vulnerabilities that he can go out there and put in a solid performance and beat a very dangerous Mexican. Yeah, well, he has continued to wreak havoc in the division. The, the champion state side refusing to, to speak his name. Lee Wood has hand-picked him as a voluntary defence tonight. Uh, I think there are plenty of safer options for him. Most people think he's crazy. Perhaps by the end of tonight, we'll say he's brilliant. I, I don't think any arguments will be made that he is the world number one. After a three-fight uh, run of Zucan, Michael Conlon and Mauricio Lara, if he's victorious in front of a home crowd tonight. Do we know what the Man City Forest score was in the end? 1-0. It's going to be loud They'll in take here. That. It is going to be loud in here tonight, folks. Do not miss it live on the zone. Get out. Pleasure to see you. You're out again uh, in a few weeks, aren't you? Stay side. Yeah, um, I think it's April, April 8th, San Antonio. So, yeah. Good Get stuff. Ready. Looking forward to, to seeing you again. Yes. Hope the bottom of your foot holds up this time, oh, mate. Hopefully, Goodness hopefully. Me. That was, uh, that was a, grim, a grim injury for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Thanks for your company on Before the Bell. Chris Lloyd, Darren Barker uh, and Galau Yafai uh, joining you ringside. And we'll see you on the other side of 7 o'clock. is off. Wood forced out through a bicep injury. Lee Wood's just ducking him. He's scared. He's running scared. No, I don't pull out of fights, especially the fights I've asked for. Chris Lara has almost turned into the boogeyman of the division. But you know what? Run it back. Run it back. You think I'm scared? Run it back. Ah! <laughs> I think this is going to be my best performance yet. I can't see reaching the halfway point. I will win by knockout.